Good morning, it's Paul again. Good news about this webinar is that you don't have to listen to me because I've got a cast of characters here who are gonna actually, actually do the whole thing. Um, this is webinar five of the uh, inaugural season of, uh, of Fieldcom Group TV, Fieldcom Group Webinar, webinar TV. Um, and this episode is called the one where Heather, Wally, and Tim um, discuss the Heart IP Developer Kit. So uh, I'm going to, um, you know, close my screen in a second, and this, you won't, you guys won't hear me again. Um, and I'd like to, but before doing so, I'd like to introduce um, Heather. Maybe you can tell a little bit about what you do, and then you go to Wally and Tim, and then you can roll the video and tell them what we tell them what we have planned for today. Okay, thanks. My name is Heather Wilden. I'm the product manager here at GoFund Group, and I have Wally and Tim here with me. Uh, we're going to be talking about Heart IP. Just a reminder that this webinar was pre-recorded. You're going to need a headset or your computer audio to listen to the video that follows once we get it rolling. Wally? Well, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Wally Pratt. Uh, a lot of you may know who I am, but I'm all about field communication protocols and heart in particular. And so I'm pretty geeky, but hopefully I won't bore you today. Tim? I'm Tim Johnson. I'm a developer here at Fieldcom Group. I've been working with Wally and in the Fieldcom uh, area for a good 20 years. Uh, I'm one of the principals uh, that developed this kit. All right, so I'm about to start. If you have any questions during the webinar, we'll be watching for them. Please type them in at any time. Uh, you might get a message back from us or we'll stick around at the end and answer questions live as well. All right. I'm going to start out here and enjoy the show. Welcome to the next webinar in our series. Today's topic is Hard IP. My name is Heather Wilden, product manager here at Fieldcom Group. With me today is Wally Pratt, director of field communication protocols, and Tim Johnson, a software developer here at Fieldcom Group and lead developer on our Hard IP developer kit. Let's take a look at our agenda for today. We'll begin with a short technology introduction with Wally. He'll show us the developer kit, which includes hardware, source code, a client application, FDI package, and tech support to get you started. The source for this kit is also an open source project on GitHub. It's kind of a first for us here at Philcom Group. And Tim is here to show us some demos about um, the kit, the uh, client itself, and where to find the project on GitHub. We'll wrap up with tips to get you started on your development towards the more open architecture using the Hard IP Developer Kit, bringing Ethernet to the field. Wally, over to you. Hard IP products have been shipping for over a decade. Hard IP was initially developed after the release of Wireless Heart in 2007. Hard IP development was driven by the need for a high speed backbone for heart communications. To support system integration, Hard IP was also added to the Hard OPC server. The Hard OPC server is used as middleware, and this allowed immediate support for Hard IP and Wireless Heart in many systems. Hard IP and the Hard OPC server were used at BASF during the multi-vendor wireless heart field trials. At BASF, multiple Hard IP and wireless heart networks all operated over the same plant backbone network. Initially, the Hard IP requirements were documented in a white paper. And in 2012, Hard IP was formalized and added to the heart protocol specifications themselves. The specifications have always supported both hard IP I.O. systems and hard IP field devices. Based on nearly a decade of field experience, clarifications and other improvements to the hard IP specifications are underway. These will be included in the Heart 7.7 specifications. Ethernet APL will become available in 2021, and while it will not impact hard IP specifications themselves, it will prevent many more opportunities for hard IP field devices. 
Hard IP is built upon the ubiquitous internet protocol standards. When looking at developing Hard IP, there was strong feeling within the Hard community that we did not want to reinvent the wheel. Instead, we would rather build upon something that is well proven, and that is the internet protocol standards. This also gives us a very strong benefit that we don't really care what physical layer is used with Hard IP. Hard IP works just fine over cell phones, packet radios, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, satellite, whatever. It doesn't care. We took a very similar approach taken by that with Modbus TCP. Let's build upon what people already know, which is the heart protocol. We take put a very thin wrapper called heart IP around standard heart commands and standard heart packets. That means all of the systems out there that know heart can use heart IP with minimal modifications. Very strong point. So after 10 years, where's hard IP today? Clearly, hard IP has a lot of fans. How many, we don't really know for sure. It is a relatively easy open protocol and folks don't have to tell us what they're using it for. I will admit most of the hardware we see today is I.O. system of one kind or another, either wired or wireless. And there's a lot of hardware that are add-ons or for SCADA. Not so much field devices yet. I mean, we think A through night APL will change that and make that a lot more pragmatic. The number of applications using hard IP is even harder to know because clients are just not that hard to implement. Hard IP is even running on cell phones and laptops and and you know tablets today. So there's a lot of applications. It's clearly being used today for control for monitoring optimization and data historians. And of course, HART's used heavily in app set management and that includes over HART IP. Today, all major hosts support HART IP. HART IP is a client-server based architecture. That means all the field devices, all the remote I.O. are servers. They're providing data about the operation of the plant up to clients. Hard IP requires that servers with its field device or I.O. support at least five clients. The thought is this allows for you know redundant controllers plus a plant asset management plus some monitoring and optimization before you run out of clients. Like the rest of the heart was wireless heart or wired heart it supports two modes of operation. One is the ad hoc, acyclical, polled request response. This is the stuff that the plant asset management systems and handhelds have been using since the 1980s. Also supported since 1980 is burst mode. This was updated in 2007 wireless heart to be smart data publishing. The whole focus of Heart 7 was to move to a publish by exception paradigm. The smart data publishing allows you to publish, for example, continuously or only when a status changes or when the data varies very much or even on a level. The cyclic process is really for control and monitoring. The way it works is you, the, con the control engineer sets up the publishing schedules and then the client subscribe and the data flows from the device straight up into the clients where it can be used. This provides a very strong basis for future applications of Heart and Heart IP. So now we come to what everybody's been waiting for, and that is the launch of the Hard IP Developer Kit and details about what the kit is and what you can do with it. Many folks in the Hard community, including me, think Hard IP is a really cool and useful technology. It's really elegant in its relative simplicity. We believe that Hard IP has opportunities for our members 
as well as have the applications that it can solve. The Hard IP Developer Kit was created to make it as easy as possible for you to get to know Hard IP. With this kit, you get all the pieces to set up and run Hard IP. With this kit, is a complete, simple flow device that's both the Hard IP server interfaces as well as complete hard application layer for a simple flow device running on a Raspberry Pi. It comes with fully assembled hardware ready to run. All source code is available. To support end users, a sample FDI device package as well as the EDD source code is provided that allows you to modify and enhance it for whatever prototyping you want to do. Just to make sure that you can get up and running with as little effort as possible, we also provide up to four hours of technical support to get you started. When we talk about full hard application layer, what we mean is it supports all the universal and common practice commands that are mandatory for hard IP. This includes burst mode, three burst messages using smart data publishing, that allows you to publish continuously at up to 20 times a second per the heart specifications. There's also command 48 and has the normal status you might find for a simple flow device. Things like low flow or a flow tube plug or what have you. It supports today two device variables and has planned a third one in the future. The first device variable uh, simulates the flow and there's a potentiometer on the board that allows you to turn back and forth to simulate that flow rate. And there's also a simulation of the power being dropped by the vibrating flow tube. Uh, there's a light sensor on the board you can cover up to make it look like it's drawing more current. In addition, this has passed all relevant heart conformance tests. So, with the Hard IP flow device fully assembled and in hand, you're now prepared to set up and operate a simple Hard IP network. Everything you see on this slide is either in hand, the flow device, or freely available, the Windows Hard IP client and the Wireshark network analyzer. The Windows Hard IP client is on GitHub and there's links to allow you to download and install it on your Windows PC. This client can talk to either uh, hard IP field devices or remote I.O. So using this client gives you the client functionality of the network. The flow device, of course, is the server. If you're interested in seeing the actual network traffic, Wireshark Network Analyzer is publicly available, freely available, and it'll display all the network traffic on Ethernet or any of a number of other kinds of network communications. It is also aware of uh, hard IP and can decode hard IP packets. So together these three elements gives you a complete operating network that you can look at, you can experiment with, and you can get to know hard IP. Aside from the Raspberry Pi based flow device, the only other thing that you need to be able to experience Hard IP is a client. We've had a Microsoft Windows based Hard IP client on GitHub for a couple of years now. So once you have this installed, you have all the core pieces you need to run Hard IP. The Hard IP client is a generic client that will speak to either hard IP field devices or hard IP remote I.O., whether that's a wireless heart gateway or a wired heart 4 to 20 milliamp interface. It's a Windows client that allows you to send and receive commands, look at the requests and responses, and even record all the published burst mode traffic. On the left-hand pane, you can see where you can enter a command number, uh, request data if there is any and hit send. The Windows Hard IP client knows internally how to parse a fairly large number of different Hard IP commands and it's pretty easy to add more if you need to. And so it'll show you the request and the response 
and also then decode the command for you in the left hand side. On the right hand side is for showing all the published burst mode data. Uh, this is the ACE, or this is the cyclic traffic used for controller monitoring. It even will run multiple instances at one time. So you could take and get, say, a dozen Raspberry Pi hard IP developer kits in one PC and talk to all of them on the same network at the same time. So pretty helpful application. One of the important reasons for building upon standards is that the tools and know-how that come along for free with those standards. The Wireshark Network Analyzer is one example of tooling that came along for free essentially when we developed Hard IP. Wireshark is an industry standard tool that understands literally hundreds of communication protocols. In fact, it's actually been Hard IP aware for over a decade, and it's easy to expand to even other protocols if you need to. So it can decode a lot of different commands and what have you. It also allows you to really look at the raw communication traffic. So if you're a bits and bytes guy like me, you can really get down in the weeds and understand all the details. So you don't have to have Wireshark to run a hard IP network, but it's kind of like shining a flashlight on the network. And in that regard, it can be really helpful. Now that we've looked at all the pieces of the Hard IP network, the Hard IP flow device, the Windows Hard IP client, and Wireshark, I'm going to turn this over to Tim Johnston, who's going to show you the Hard IP developer kit and the Hard IP network in action. Good morning. My name is Tim Johnston. I'm one of the principal developers of this Hard IP developer kit. I'm very happy to be here with you today to demonstrate what we've been talking about in these previous slides. These are the same three elements of a minimal demonstration hard IP network. This Windows hard IP client allows us to look into the field device just like any other heart host. It shows the identity of the field device, allows us to send and receive commands. It will also capture process and status data which is published by the field device. This Wireshark network analyzer allows us to view the actual communications on the Hard IP network. And finally, this is the Hard IP field device which is included in the Hard IP developer kit. This bottom board is the Raspberry Pi computer. It's about the size of a credit card. It has a lot of features and is a nice computer in its own right. We are using power over ethernet, so no additional cables are needed to operate the device. There are USB ports available if you want to connect a mouse and keyboard. There's an HDMI port available if you'd like to connect a monitor. And this micro SD card is the disk drive for the computer that contains the pre-installed software. The middle card is the power over ethernet card. There are many ethernet switches available which support PoE and that allows you to run the device with a single cable. In the future we will offer an ethernet APL board to replace this PoE card. The top card is the A to D board there's an optical sensor and a flow pot for flow tube current simulation. External sensors for these can be connected here to this terminal block. You can connect your own sensors and modify the source code as needed for your prototypes. DIN rail. We include this for mounting the device on a DIN rail. You can mount a dozen or more on a DIN rail and experiment with a larger network of devices. Since you can launch multiple Windows Hard IP clients, you could have one client talking to each of the devices on the DIN rail. 
This device implements all the universal and common practice commands required by Heart IP. Let's see the operation of the field device. We begin by sending a command zero. Sending a command is easy. Just enter the command number and the data here. You don't need to enter the byte count. The client takes care of that. Click send and the command is sent. We can see several things now. Looking at Wireshark, you can see the communication on the wire. Wireshark is very powerful and can show all hard IP communications. That's an, a bit of an information overload. Wireshark has filtering capabilities and for this demo we have the filter set up to only show hard IP traffic. The command request and response is shown on the client. The client knows this command and so will decode it for you. There are many commands known by the client and it is easy to add more yourself. Also, this shows how fast hard IP is. You can see the request is sent at 355 milliseconds and the response is received in the same time, uh, a one millisecond turnaround. Typical response times are about three milliseconds for this field device. Request, response, or polling is typically used by asset management systems. For process automation, measurement, optimization, and control, using publish subscribe or heart burst mode is best practice. Like wireless heart, publish and subscribe is mandatory. It should be configured by the plant's process engineer, not an instrument tech, to meet the process and measurement requirements. The client can then subscribe to the published data. In this case, the three burst messages are already configured. We can see the settings using command 105. The device is set up to publish the process data, command 48 status, and the configuration changed counter, command 38. This means that the burst messages are already being generated by the field device. To start receiving the published data, we need to send the client subscription command to 533. The client has a button that will send the command 533 for us, asking for all the published traffic. On the right, you can now see the published traffic scrolling up the screen. The process data is published at 20 messages per second. Command 48 and 38 can occur much less often and when their process values change. The packets are coming fast and so the client will also plot the command 9 process data for you. The plot is cool because now you can see what happens when you change the flow. I'll twist the pot here to change the simulated flow rate and at 20 updates per second we can capture rapid movements in the primary variable. Remember Hard IP packets are small and both Twisted, Pair Ethernet, and Ethernet APL support huge data rates. Even at Ethernet APL 10 megabits per second, communicating the process data only uses a tiny fraction of the available bandwidth. We are actually very excited about what the Hard IP Developer Kit provides. This is a working Hard IP device that has passed the conformance tests. Using the Hard IP Developer Kit makes it fast and easy to set up a real Hard IP network. We recommend all members evaluate Hard IP and imagine what is possible with the increased power and speed it offers. Remember that Hard IP is the same heart you know, just faster. Thank you, Tim. That was a really good job. Very informative on what you can do with the Hard IP field device. Now we want to talk about Philcom Group's activities in the area of open source and how that plays into the Hard IP Developer Kit. Hard and Hard IP have been available for a few years now and are generally regarded as relatively simple and easy to use. That being the case, it is important that we continue to make Hart relevant and provide a path forward for continued use of the Hart technology. The Hart community and the Hart Technology Working Group in general have brainstormed about how to make, if anything, Hart simpler. 
And one of the stratagems that they strongly support is making more heart software available as open source. If you look at the modern developers, the first thing they look at when they start looking at technology is, you know, are there any YouTube videos on it? Is there any open source to get us started? If you don't have open source today, then you're letting down the uh, opportunity to promote the adoption of your technology. Our IP flow devices are our first approach at open source to promote our technology. Philcom Group has a lot of software around here, master stacks and hard IP servers and slave device examples and all kinds of things. And we should consider and will consider how to selectively make that open. The bottom line is shelfware provides industry and our members no value. When looking at a vehicle to make an open source available worldwide, uh, GitHub was really the most logical choice. There are others, but GitHub is the big boy on the block. If you look at the graphic on the screen, you can see from the shading that there's really tremendous numbers of people using GitHub, and the number of uh, commits by country are also really quite large. GitHub has become just, just really a huge place. Uh, I think there's something on the order of 31 million GitHub users today with over 100 million repositories. Each repository is different software application. And then for planning purposes, they have something called projects. There's like 49 million projects. So the numbers for GitHub and the amount of people using and expecting to use open source today has really, really gotten to be huge. And GitHub is really the place to be to see that. Before we go and look at our GitHub repositories, let's talk a little bit about the architecture of the Hard IP flow device. If you recall from the slide about Hard IP built on standards, you'll see it's built in a layered fashion. And on the top of the stack is an application. The application is like the flow device. When you look at the repository, there's actually three repositories out there. One for the Hard IP developer kit as a whole, then one for a hard IP server and one for a hard application. A hard application is a flow meter. The hard IP server repository encapsulates all of the stuff necessary to implement a hard IP server, including the commands that are specific to hard IP servers. The rest of the hard application layer, all the commands and measurements and configuration in the application. So when you go and look at the repository, you'll find the Hard IP Developer Kit, which is all the documentation, and then you'll find the two repositories for the so software, which is the Hard IP Server and the Hard Application. And what we'll do is we're going to turn this over to Tim Johnston again, and he'll walk you through the uh, Philcom Group repositories and look at each of these repositories in the Hard IP Developer Kit in a little bit more detail. Our GitHub site is easy to find. Just Google for Fieldcom Group GitHub and that will take you straight there. When you get there, this is the page that you will see. Currently, there are four publicly available repositories and we plan to add more over time. HIP Server is the Hard IP Server component. HIP Flow App is the Hard IP Field Device Application Layer component. Hard IP Developer Kit is a documentation for the Flow Device. And Windows Hard IP Client is a general purpose Hard IP host application. If you recall from the architecture diagram on the slides, the Hard IP Flow device consists of two modules, the Hard IP server and the Flow app. The GitHub repositories reflect that. The Hard IP developer kit is a documentation only repository that ties together all the information about the Flow device. Let's look at some of this documentation. 
Let's start with the Heart IP Developer Kit. We'll click this link. Will take us to the Kit repository. All GitHub repositories have a README page. You scroll down to find it. This repository is the main documentation repository for the Flow device. All three of these repositories have links that allow you to navigate between them as here and here. Towards the bottom of the page we have links to pages with more detailed information about the device. The device specification, how to buy and build a device, how to operate the device, and how to connect a client to it. A particular interest to us right here is the flow device specification. We'll click on that link. This page uses the same outline as the requirements for device specific documentation also known as Lit18, that Heart developers should already know about. The main topics are introduction, device identification, product overview, product interfaces, device variables, dynamic variables, status information, and universal and common practice commands implemented by the device. There are no device specific commands at this time. Let me highlight portions of this spec process interface provides information that allow you to connect to external signals and includes links to the data sheets for the A to D and D to A converters. The local interfaces provides an overview of all the connections on the Raspberry Pi. You might want to take advantage of these if you begin doing some prototyping. However, only the Ethernet and possibly power are needed to run the Heart IP flow device. The device variables contains detailed information about the behavior of the flow and the status information documents what's returned in device status, extended device status, and command 48 response, including low flow conditions and high drive current. High drive current simulates a flow tube becoming plugged. Let's discuss the source code repositories now, starting with the HIP server component. To get there, go to the Fieldcom Group main page and select the HIP server link. Both source code repositories follow this same format with an overview, some known issues, a user guide, and a developer guide. You can see from this component diagram where the HIP server component sits in the scheme of things. Uh, it manages the connections, the hard IP connections with the clients, opening and ending sessions, keep alive messages, and client subscriptions to published data, and also uh, pushing published data messages to subscribed clients. Uh, this piece serves as an insulation between the hard IP and the app itself, which is a straight heart application layer without any knowledge of a heart IP. The remainder of this page has a description of source code and other notes for developers. Let's go to the, heart, the HIP flow app repository by clicking this link. Similarly, it has an overview, known issues, a user guide, and developer notes. Thank you, Tim. That was a really good walkthrough of what's out in the repositories. And as I think everybody can recognize, there's a lot of good information out there. However, there are a lot of benefits to the Hard IP Developer Kit more than just simply downloading a bunch of open source code. One of the benefits unique to the Hard IP Developer Kit is the FDI device package and the EDD source code. These allow you a starting point for, to go along with the open source in your journey toward developing a Hard IP field device. With the Hard IP Developer Kit, you get the source code for an EDD and FDI device package project. Together, the two of them meet the minimum requirements 
to necessary to register a device package. That means you have access to all the parameters and commands associated with the flow device. You have representations of the flow rates with engineering units. Uh, there's plots of the mass flow, which is the primary variable, or the flow tube current, which is a secondary variable. And it also demonstrates the use of the status. So there are status indicators for maintenance required if the flow tube is becoming plugged. Or most flow meters have like a 10 to 1 turn down. And so once you're below 10% of the full range, there'll be a poor accuracy status bit as well. So again, all the necessary features uh, to register a package and demonstrates all the capabilities of the flow device. Uh, it's a lot easier to see with the DD some of these things than reading the commands streaming by on the Windows Hard IP client. Now we are going to take a quick look at the EDD for the Hard IP flow device. We're going to look at only three of the common screens. Of course, all of the mandatory screens and features are present. We are looking first at the operate screen. In this screen, you can see a chart of the PV and SV flow and flow tube current. As is normal for an asset management app, this data is polled. It updates more slowly than the publish subscribe updates. First, changing the flow. Then the flow tube current. Now let's look at the detailed setup. In this screen, we can review and update the basic configuration of the Hard IP flow device. It only supports the Hard IP mandatory, universal, and common practice commands. Consequently, the detailed setup is equally simple. One noteworthy point is that the device supports range values, but naturally there is no loop current, so that returns not a number as expected. Now we'll look at the Diagnostics screen. Status group 0 is the only device specific status defined. These values update as the flow and flow tube current change. The device status and extended device status also update. So for example, if the flow tube current goes high, the high drive current will become set along with the maintenance required extended device status. This is a quick overview, of course. There are more screens. You can see those when you have the Hard IP Developer Kit. So we've given you quite a bit of information about Hard IP and about the Hard IP Developer Kit. So let's take a few minutes to recap before we move on to answering your questions. The Hard IP Developer Kit provides you everything you need to set up a simple Hard IP network. We recommend you set up a network today and begin learning about Hard IP. Whether you're a field device manufacturer or a host vendor, this simple network will help you understand Hard IP and the opportunities it presents you. Hard IP is relatively simple to add to a host, and for field device developers, it allows you to use the hard expertise you already have to offer more products to your customers. With Hard IP available now and Ethernet APL on the horizon, adding more measurements to a plant will be relatively easy. The Raspberry Pi based Hard IP flow device allows you to relatively quickly customize and prototype a Hard IP device for your kinds of measurements and actuators. You can connect your own transducers, you can change the PV and SV, you can update the way the uh, signal processing is done to suit the kinds of products that you're used to building. In addition, there are many add-on boards for servo motors, stepper motors, relays, discrete I.O., and so forth. So if you need additional interfaces for your kind of device, 
those are easily available to help with prototyping. You can also even go so far as replace the flow device application with your own heart firmware. This means it would have the same device specific commands, common practice commands, the same unit codes as you're using today. This also means that you can run your existing DD either directly or with minor modifications. The result is a device with the same look and feel but running over hard IP. With hard IP and Ethernet APL, you of course have a lot faster wire to communicate over and a lot more power available to your field device. Hard IP enables direct connection to the field, whether you're a PLC, monitoring application, or even a cloud application. It's fast, it's lightweight. Like Heart, it's relatively simple but not trivial. Consequently, the Heart IP Developer Kit provides value for host applications as well. If you're new to Heart IP, it gives you a vehicle to learn about Heart IP and add Heart IP to your host. If you already have Heart IP, then the native Heart IP field device allows you to test the operation of Heart IP. Many existing applications assume Heart IP is only for I.O. systems, so having a real field device will benefit even people that already have Heart IP. Of course, it's the same heart command, same process and status information that your host application already knows, so that makes it easy too. In summary, the Heart IP Developer Kit is the quickest way to experience Heart IP. You have ready to run hardware and tech support to allow you to quickly get started with your own hard IP network. All the source code is available to study, to modify, to understand. It also includes the EDD source code and FDI device package project. So in addition to using the device itself, you also can use FDI to talk to the device as you would a normal product. Of course, we're never completely done with any product, and the Hard IP Developer Kit is no exception. We are committed to supporting Ethernet APL on the Hard IP Developer Kit, and we'll add a hat, an extra board for Ethernet APL, that will replace the Power over Ethernet card. There's lots of upgrades possible for the field device itself, including additions for the Totalizer device family. Hard IP version 2, uh, lots of discussions about improvements we could make to the Hard IP client. The main point here is this is the benefit again of having open source. This open source project is collaborative and you can make a contribution as well. If you're interested in Hard IP and become passionate like we are, make a contribution. If there's improvements you would like to see, feel free to do it yourself and submit it back to us. Ultimately, the developer kit and the open source that Philcom Group has will evolve the way the members want it to do and based upon the contributions they make. Get involved. We appreciate your help. Certainly, Hard IP and Ethernet APL are a powerful combination and they enable development of innovative field instruments. But why should you care? Where is the market? What we are hearing is that no one will be replacing the plants they have. It just doesn't make sense. However, industry does envision a major expansion in monitoring and optimization of the existing plants. If you look at the, the more open architecture or the open process automation initiative, monitoring and optimization data are critical elements moving forward. It seems some envision instrumentation market for measurement optimization to be a significant fraction of the installed base already out there. That is potentially a huge number of new field devices. So it seems we have a convergence approaching. The convergence of the measurement and optimization initiatives, along with Hard IP and Ethernet APL, represent, therefore, a significant opportunity. We encourage you to be ready for that opportunity.
If you have any questions related to Hard IP and you've not posted them yet in our uh, question panel, please do so now. We'll stick around for a few minutes to answer your questions. Thank you to Wally Pratt and Tim Johnson for the information they shared today. I think our members will find this really useful for their upcoming projects. While we wait for those questions, I'll remind everyone about our next webinars in the 2020 FCG TV series. The next one up will be all about the repository API. This webinar will be presented by Stephen Mitchkey and Donnie Goff, one of our software developers here at Philcom Group. This one will be of interest to any of our host application vendors looking to improve their application access to the latest register DDs and FTI packages that have completed conformance testing within our labs. If you missed our America's member meeting last spring, this will be your chance to learn about the repository API. The final one will be on HTML5 UIPs hosted by yours truly and Stephen Mitchkey. We'll talk about what is a UIP, a user interface, user interface plugin, how do you get started developing one, and how do you get it inside your FDI package. So we'll discuss that process to help developers get started with HTML5 UIPs. Here we are at the end of our webinar. We have a lot of questions that came in. Uh, so thank you everyone for sending those in. Uh, we'll try to get through as many as we can here in about the next five to seven minutes. Um, so the first one is for Tim. Is DHCP used to get the IP address or do I have to set up an address in the uh, device? We're using DHCP in the server right now. Uh, we have plans to add static address, but we haven't done that yet. Nice. And another one for Tim, uh, does Wireshark include hard IP filters as shown in your video? Yes, uh, if you download a recent Wireshark, uh, you can just type in heart underscore IP and the address in the uh, filter bar and it'll, it'll kick right in. All right, next question. How difficult would it be to port the hard IP stack from Raspberry Pi that we have it on right now over to a low power micro, microcontroller? Well, there are a couple of differences. Uh, one is uh, a low power device doesn't typically use Linux, so there's some portage to do there. Also, our stack is C++, and typically the embedded will be a C language or similar. So there's a little bit of effort there. Okay. It's still, that's still not very clear. I mean, there are real-time Linuxes out there. I mean, the hard IP server, for example, uses the standard socket interfaces and stuff. And it's only, you know, a couple of kilobytes. So th there'll be some effort. We really haven't fully assessed that, you know, uh, to be in all fairness. Sorry to jump in there. No, it's good. Thank you, Willie. Uh, next question. Is this device connected up to the uh, reference runtime of the FDI tools using the hard IP comm server? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Uh, there well, is, uh, <clears throat> go ahead, Wally. Yeah, we're, u we're using the standard FDI package IDE. There are commercial hard IP comm servers available uh, if you're running uh, uh, FDI in a commercial application. So there's a, some nuances there, just to be clear. And to add to that, if you have the FDI IDE 1.4.1, we have an update to our hard IPCOM server included with that. And that's the one that we use today. So another question for Tim, does the burst command happen over UDP? Yes, it does. Uh, it happens over the over the channel that you open your session with. So it happens on the same channel uh, with the, with the uh, acyclic commands. So, uh, and our implementation right now is UDP, so yes. Excellent. Okay, I've got a couple more questions. We'll try to squeeze in here. Um, how many features does the hard IP developer kit support, like event notification, catch variables, et cetera? The, uh, 
the exact details of what is implemented is in the uh, device specific documentation on GitHub. I did a quick look and we support burst mode uh, and the other minimal requirements in the current hard IP specs that are coming out. There will be additional requirements to support event notification and hard IP field devices. That's not in there yet. Uh, catch device variable would be optional uh, in all cases, and so we're not. You know, again, our focus is on the mandatory uh, common practice plan. And also, as we mentioned, this is a GitHub project. So if you get the new specifications and you want to add those things to this project, feel free free to do so and send back the code through GitHub. Um, that would be an excellent way to get involved with this project. All right, next question. This one's for Wally. For conformance test, uh, conformance testing, what is the scope of the hard IP device in comparison to a regular wired heart device? Well, a regular wired heart device, you do physical air tests as well as data link layer tests. Those don't map over exactly. There are hard IP server tests. Uh, those test specs for hard IP servers are in draft form. Uh, being developed uh, by the Hard IP Project Group. Uh, the draft is complete and posted in the uh, Hard Technology Working Group workspace. Uh, so if you're a member of that working group, you certainly have access or you can join and get access. Uh, there will be Ethernet APL test specs as well, and that will be the subject of that particular working group. So. You know, it's the same application layer. We already can run this, those application layer tests just by the nature of the beast. Um, so, not rocket science. And I believe the heart test system will also have a, an update to be able to test the native heart IP field devices. So, the next version that will come out of that will implement the next set of specifications that are uh, about to be released. Is that correct, Molly? Yeah, that, that's correct. You can run the application layer test today with the latest release. The hard IP server test won't be in there until the next release, which is this winter, I think, uh, which would be 1.5, I believe. No, 3.7. 3 there, 3.7. There you go. <laughs> All right, our last question uh, for today is can we experiment with the hard IP application as demonstrated? Is the kit um, is the kit accessible for SCG members? And as you can see on our final screen here, yes, you can purchase this kit right now. I have the Go link up here on the screen. It's go.fieldfoundgroup.org slash dev kit. Uh, you can visit that. You can go to our GitHub repository. Uh, you can also, as we mentioned, join a working group. Uh, whether it's the hard IP working group or the new APL stuff we're working on, uh, go to our workspace and sign up to do something because we always need volunteers. So with that, I'm going to say thank you to Wally, thank you to Tim, and thanks Paul, he's, he's dropped off. But, um, and thank you for everyone who was watching today. We really appreciate you having uh, a lot of questions about this and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you later.